Hi everybody, how's everybody doing? It's Friday night, yay! All right, let me make sure I'm on on Facebook. Hello everyone. Let's see. Oh, how's everybody doing? Hi Whitney. And so much charm. I looked at your thing. You're a blogger. What kind of blog post do you write? So much charm. All right. Well, it's Friday night, everybody. So what that means is Darlene, that's me with Featherway Doctor, Oh, thank you. I have my glasses on because my eyeballs hurt. <laughs> Winnie said I look stunning tonight. So nice. Look, look, I got my hair done. Yay! <laughs> We're almost through this. <laughs> oh, a sewing and quilting lifestyle blog online shop. Oh, we should have a chat. I interview other boss babes like yourself who are female entrepreneurs in a male dominated world. You and I should have a chat. Um, okay. I'm still not, hold on. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh good, I'm on. Okay. Yay. Who's on my, oh my friend Becky's here. You like my shirt. Thank you. Hi Rose. Annette from Kansas is on, and hi, Lisa Wood. Okay, like, once we all get out of quarantine, I'm going to have to stop greeting everybody with a wave. I realize I talk a lot with my hands, and um, it's a little silly because I'm like, I'll be on the phone with someone not on the camera, and I find myself, like, you know, moving my hands around. Hello. <laughs> all right, so tonight... Oh, let me turn on my other camera angle. Hang on one sec here. Love. Okay. All right, so today I have my pretty lavender featherweight. Um, she's doing the, the work tonight. Um, I like to try and rotate uh, featherweights, not only because they're cute. Hi, hippie chick from Seattle. Are you safe? You're not on Capitol Hill, are you? I'm kind of glad I live on the other side of the lake tonight. Um... And so she's going to be doing the work, but you guys have seen my Minnie Mouse, my red and white polka dot machine. She's back here, actually. And I use my daughter's yellow one, and there's a pink one back there. But I mostly move them around because everybody needs a workout every once in a while. And I pulled this off the shelf about an hour ago, and she was, <laughs> hi, Lisa Meadows. <laughs> I like your Forrest Gump gif. It's so cute. Hi, Mary from Seattle. Um, anyway, the... Uh, and so they all need some exercise every once in a while. Good, she's safe. I'm watching the news and I'm like, Seattle has lost its mind. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get attacked for saying that, but good Lord, you can't just declare a five square block radius a new country and harass the people that live in it and, and shake down the businesses for money. I mean, these poor business owners are just getting up and on their feet again, and now they're in an occupied five block radius in Seattle. I, my heart, my heart goes out to you people. I, I just, it's, it is a heck of a time to live. That's not in a good way. Goodness gracious. All right, I have Missy from Redmond. Uh, Missy knows it's a drippy Friday night out there. Uh, it's been on and off all day today, raining. It is, this is like the perfect way to sit and have a Friday night social. Oh good, Mary's not on Capitol Hill. A friend just walked through and said it was more like a party. A party? <laughs> what? That's crazy. <laughs> all right, let's see who else is on. Okay, good. So we're gonna continue our work on the um, on the uh, Tula Pink quilt. I was I was gonna surprise you guys tonight and do something different. We might do it next Friday night if I get a resounding, yes, Darlene, this is what we wanna do. I have a quilt that's just about done, that's a quilt as you go. Now, for those of you who don't know what quilt as you go is, uh, it is, 
Oh, Bridget, it's not white, it's purple. It's lavender. Bridget says, I've never seen a white featherweight before. It's lavender. It's li lilac color. She's so pretty. Um, so uh, for now, the I was a quilt as you go quilt is a quilt that you quilt block by block. So however big your blocks are, the one that I'm about to finish is a 20 inch block. And as you know, working in a um, small space like the featherweight, it really is helpful to to work in smaller pieces. So you quilt each block like you would, and then you square up each block, and then there's a way of connecting them so that there's no batting overlap. Um, and it goes together and you can make like a really big quilt on this little tiny machine. And so if you guys are game next Friday night, I think I'm going to do a demo on that, how to do a quilt as you go. Cause I think, um, I think that, uh, you guys might find it interesting. Susie James says, hello everybody. Hi Susie. All right, so I have my wine tonight, one, one glass. We don't get silly. We just have a tiny little sip here and there. It's happy hour here in Seattle. So tonight, instead of listening to me drowned on, oh good, Whitney's in for the quilt as you go demo. Cool. Um, instead of me just drowning on, I thought I would ask you guys a question. I want you to tell me about your favorite quarantine purchase. And I need to qualify that a little bit. So at the beginning of all of this stuff, um, my family and I had, okay, good, a vote for the demo. <laughs> Hi Donna, so-and-so. Um, the uh, We had a very conscious conversation. Shh, shh, hey. Oh, sorry, my husband <laughs> has his earphones on and can't hear himself. Um, so anyway, we had a very conscious, we sat down, the three of us, our little family of three, my daughter who's in college and my husband and I, and we said, what do we, since we're not taking a vacation this year, we're not getting on a plane, we don't really know what the summer is going to look like, what items can we purchase, hi Becky, um, that will make this quarantine easier. Hi Donna. Um, so we sat down and we were like, you know, what can we get for the backyard or what can we do for the house? Could we put in a garden. That was one of the quarantine things that we did. We hadn't done that before. I usually wouldn't have time this time of year between shows and workshops and traveling for speaking engagements. Anyway, um, so I, so my favorite, I'm going to start off this conversation. I want you guys to text in and tell me what your favorite quarantine purchase has been. And, and a featherweight is a perfectly acceptable response of course. Um, my favorite quarantine purchase that I definitely wouldn't have purchased had we not been in quarantine is a very fancy blender. I know that is, if that is not a, I'm in my forties housewife response, I don't know what is. It's like saying, oh, my favorite Christmas present was a vacuum cleaner. But doesn't a really nice vacuum cleaner make vacuuming that much easier and we all have to do it, right? So for me in quarantine, my favorite, um, a new Dyson bag, Missy's like, amen, sister. Uh, my favorite quarantine purchase is a very fancy blender because I decided when we went into this whole deal that I was not coming out looking like a marshmallow. So I have actually committed to myself every day to work out. So I've been working, I do take a rest day, I work out six days on and then take a rest day. And I have um, a Peloton in my house so I can spin and work out in my house. I've started doing core, core work and floor work, but one of the best things you can do for your body after you've expelled all of these calories is to put good proteins back into it. And so for me, having a really nice protein smoothie after all of my workouts has been so lovely. So that is my crazy quarantine purchase. <laughs> Linda Wood, she's a crazy lady, I can tell. She, her big quarantine purchase was two LED light bulbs for her featherweights. For me, that is an amazing upgrade. Don't you love using them, Linda? I mean, it is so much brighter in here and not yellow. <laughs> So I totally get that. That's a good purchase. All right, I'm going to grab my fabric and get to sewing because I realize I left it back there. So let me grab it real quick. All right. 
tonight I am hoping to finish my last three, um, <laughs> my last three blocks in this colorway for my Tula quilt. Uh, Rose, my friend Rose, said wooden floors for four bedrooms, hallway and stairs. Husband is putting in the floor. That is definitely a quarantine purchase. Because who would have time for home improvements? <laughs> Linda's, Linda Wood said, yes, they're amazing, the light bulbs. Who would have time for that type of a home reno if you weren't stuck in quarantine? Did you guys see on the news, I was reading an article, I can't remember which article, um, what the source was, so I apologize, about how you know, the, the virus, um, numbers are spiking again. And so they're talking about reinstating restrictions. Girls, we ha in Seattle, we just bear, we're not even in phase two. Um, our wonderful governor, uh, is calling it phase 1.5. So we're not even in phase two, which means that today I got to go to the hair salon for two hours with a mask on my face and I got my gray roots covered up. Uh, that is not a complaint. I'm very thankful for that. But um, the fact that we might lose what little, you know, freedom we have just now gotten back. Hmm. Kathleen Rogers said her craziest quarantine purchase was Greece for me after she discovered my videos. Thanks, Kathleen. I appreciate that. I really do deeply appreciate all of the online orders, you guys. It has kind of help fill the gap for me with um, not being able to go to shows or do any kind of other revenue generating activities outside of the house. So I really, really, really appreciate your business. All right, if you guys remember from last week, I'm still sewing my um, outer, oops, the outer edges of my block so there'll be borders around this when I'm done tonight hopefully I heard Susie that the numbers were going up in Arizona yeah Bridget said the same thing um my in-laws live in Arizona so that scares me and they're in that sensitive age bracket I mean barely in that sensitive age bracket but still they have plans to jump on their motor home um and head out, oh, oh, I already messed up because I was talking. Well, that's nice. Okay, hold on, I gotta cut these apart now. Um, they have plans on being gone for the whole summer. All right, Rose says, it ain't going to happen. The chickens have been let out of the coop. We won't be put back in. I totally agree with you. Becky said, we're also doing some updating on your house. Nice. Becky's in Texas, Kennedale, Texas. Uh, pulled off wallpaper and textured walls and painted, doing floors, hubby, doing all the work. But the nice, oh, <laughs> but the nice, what you say, the best purchase is my new addition to the family. Her um, fancy, fancy 222 that she bought for me and then named after me. So her name is Ruby Darlene. How sweet is that? Rose, there's another Darlene that's named after me. That's awesome. Hi, Melanie. Nice to see you, sweetheart. Well, not see you, but nice to talk to you. And Lisa said, my splurge for stay at home was the tan feather wave. <laughs> I feel like a bad influence here. Maybe, maybe this wasn't a good conversation starter. <laughs> uh, you also put in a garden. Good job. Hi, Jennifer from Australia. Good morning. Good Lord. Good morning. We haven't even had dinner yet. Are you ahead or behind us? She said painting the inside of the house. That's her her crazy quarantine project or, or purchase. <laughs> Rose, nice. <laughs> um, I think I told you guys that this is my favorite. I'm unsewing now. Do you guys see that? I made two seams and now I'm unsewing. I need to pay attention. I get chatting and then, you know my my good practices that I always are on my students about go right out the door. I will tell you that when I pulled this machine out, it has probably not been run in about six months and it sounded like it. So I immediately hit some oil holes and she sounds much better. Okay, so I have, what quarter inch foot are you using? 
Hello, Quilts for Street Dreams. Gutters and downspouts, Donna. That is your exciting quarantine purchase? Jeez. You're a crazy lady. Wild and crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm showing you my quarter inch foot here. So this is my favorite one. We carry two on the website. This one is the one without the guide. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It has some lines, some marking lines on it. And why I like it is it's a quarter inch from either side of the foot. So if you're doing these half square triangles like I've been doing, um, <laughs> then it's kind of nice. If you have the one with the guide, the guide's only on one side and then it's not as useful. Oh, it's Saturday, so you're ahead of us. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so that's the, this, this, so this is the quarter inch foot without the guide that we carry on our website, featherweightdoctor.com. Did I finish disconnecting? No. Did you guys hear about the new um, way of punking your husband or your significant other? I heard this on the radio today. It's There's a new thing. So you remember a couple of years ago, there was that thing about punking your teenager and sending, oh, is this quilts for sweet dreams? Is this your dream machine or your featherweight? Um, anyway, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. in Kentucky. Yes, ma'am. Debbie and I, Debbie Sinclair. Hi, Debbie. We had a wonderful conversation this week. Um, anyway, the new way of punking your significant other. So what I mean by punking is a couple years ago, you know, to get your teenager, you used to send them into the um, auto supply store and tell them to ask for blinker fluid. Well, of course, there's no such thing as blinker fluid, but it was supposed to be a way of punking your teenager. So there's a new way of punking your significant other. I want feedback if this goes well for you this week, guys. Um, Brush Prairie, Washington. Hi, Gloria Wheeler. Found magic pins. Oh, good. You found the pins. Wonderful. And then Melanie says, calls coming in. Got Oh, you got to go. Bye, Melanie. Um, so the new way of punking your husband is to go through the Starbucks drive through and tell, tell your husband to order you a pinky drinky. <laughs> it's hilarious. I listened to this thing on the radio today because I've been in the car a little bit. Uh, and some guy, they recorded him going through the Starbucks drive through and the barista, the lady barista was like, and what else do you want? And he's like, well, my, my lady would like a pinky drinky. And the, and the barista's like, a what? <laughs> and he repeated it. He goes, a pinky drinky. And the lady's like, um, are you asking for a pink drink? And then the guy caught on really fast and he's like, hi, Janelle. The guy was like, oh yeah. I guess she just punked me, didn't she? <laughs> so, so go punk your husbands and then let me know how it goes. That sounds hilarious. A pinky drinky. <laughs> how you doing, my friend, Janelle? All right. Well, I've only sewn two seams, Janelle, and I'm already unsewing because I wasn't paying attention, and now I'm taking it apart. Um, Gloria Wheeler, where is... Brush, uh, Brush Prairie, Washington. I have never heard of that. And I am practically a native. That must be over in Eastern Washington, I'm thinking. All right, let's try this again. Put the right pieces together. Pretty good in this crate. Yes, you lay low there in Ballard, girl. Um, Janelle, we're talking about our favorite quarantine purchases. What's your favorite quarantine purchase? quarantine purchase fabric you guys didn't have enough in your stash to make it through the the quarantine 
That was a joke. <laughs> Alice, do you have any beige? I think you're asking, are you, at, uh, Alice, are you asking for the white machine or the tan machine? The little white machines look like, they're almost like celery green. Oh, good job. Janelle said she hasn't purchased anything else online <laughs> but fabric. Oh, and Alice's big expenditure was a 40-yard roll of warm and natural batting. I totally get that. I totally get that. <laughs> My friend Rose says, I watched the hoarder show and then fill up on, oop, I lost it, on stuff that they see. Oh, her stash is now called medical equipment. I like that. And we're essential workers because we need our masks, right? Oh, what's going on? Oh. Okay. Um, so Alice, I don't have any tan featherweights. They're actually really rare, but I do have a little white featherweight. Actually, she's right there on the shelf. I don't know her year off the top of my head. I want to say it's a 64. Um, and you can, Alice, you can email me at the shop and I can give you the details on her. That is, um, my email address is info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com. All one word, all spelled out. The tans, I... I recently acquired three tans and they were literally gone within, I wasn't even home from the drive from picking them up. That's how fast they went. It was like just a few hours. Makes me want to get my featherweight out. Yes, you haven't gotten your featherweight out, Janelle. Come on, girl. I, I do like, I have another, I have a modern machine also. Um, I know you guys will probably be very surprised by this, uh, but it's a, the Tula Pink edition of the Bernina. I know, big shocker. Alice, I am here in, oh, you're headed to Oregon tomorrow to camp. Nice. Oh, and you're in California. Very cool. I'm up in the Seattle area. Yeah, I know, with the long arms. Yes, I... I just finished this quilt. I don't know. Oh, you guys can't see it. I just finished this big king size quilt for my mom-in-law on my long arm this week. So I it took longer than normal because it's 106 inches square. So um, uh, it was like a pass or two a day. It took forever. Okay. One, two, three, four. Good, Darlene. One, two. Okay. Don't have to pull anything out. Oh, I'm not in Oregon. I'm in Washington. I know, 106 square. She li she likes a really big drop on her to her mat, uh, covering her box spring. So that's why it's so big. Oh, you do have a 90. Janome's are beautiful machines. Alice said she sews on a normal machine. If you're just joining me, um, I'm talking about your crazy quarantine projects slash, slash purchases. I am working on, Miss um, Janelle, I am working on that quilt that I started, like it feels like forever ago, quarantine quilt number six. It's the Tula, with the Tula Pink homemade fabric. Um, it is a pattern called Cross Your Heart made by Stephanie at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. And it's a big bed quilt. I think it's like, I want to say 96 square. And it's um, modern. So it has a lot of like negative space. So it has these heart, this heart, pieced, pieced hearts in the middle, in the shape of a heart, and then this a lot of negative space. So I'm still working on, this is just one of three colorways. And th there are nine blocks in this, um, in this uh, colorway and eight in each of the other two. If, if I actually, you know, had some dedicated time to actually sewing for fun, then I would totally um, be making a lot, 
quicker progress, but I just haven't had any time because I've been so busy with um, Featherweight Doctor and then um, my, so the quarantine quilts have started to uh, pour in. Masks, masks, some more masks, yes. Yes, quilts for sweet dreams. Um, so I I just got three quilts in today via the mail from a good client in Arizona that I met while we lived there. And then I have three more being delivered to my porch uh, on Tuesday next week. So I'm going to be buried at my long arm for a while too. I'm, uh, is anybody thinking about dinner? Well, my friend in Australia is thinking about breakfast. <laughs> so another crazy quarantine purchase that I absolutely would not have bought is an air fryer. Do you guys know what those are? So they give the taste and crunch and crisp like a deep fryer without all of the oil and the and the fat and my I have to admit my in-laws bought one a while ago and I um and I kind of turned I did I wasn't th they said oh you need one of these Darlene and I'm like I don't like the idea of another countertop appliance in the kitchen I like things kind of you know with nice clean lines and such and um but my friend uh who is an excellent cook has been using her air fryer up a storm and so i thought oh see donna says they're great so i thought okay we're gonna do this so i bought an air fryer this week and i've used it several times it's amazing it, uh, amazing you guys i did i make a chicken parmesan and it was the most delicious chicken I have ever cooked. It was crispy and hard on the outside and soft and juicy on the inside. And that was amazing. Lisa, dinner's in an hour and a half. That's, that's late. Well, I guess not that late. It's only 4.30. Pork chops, baked beans, corn on the cob. Yum. And yes, I love my air fryer. Nice. Loves to rewarm pizza in it. I hadn't tried that. That's not a bad idea either. Oh, Columbia River from, oh, East Vancouver, Washington. Nice. Okay, now I know where you're at. Thanks, Gloria. All right, here's my my um, end pieces. So you, I'll show you what these look like in a sec. Get this on. My mother-in-law said I needed to, um, my mother-in-law said I needed to try wings in it too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Janelle's like, pizza delivery tonight. <laughs> Daughter-in-law got her featherweight goodies. Yay, that's amazing. Good, I'm glad she liked it. Happy birthday to her. So um, tonight in the air fryer, I am making, it's called Bang Bang Shrimp. So I bought these big um, prawns at Costco when I was there last, and I mean they're like really big. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use panko breading. Oh, I didn't even think about warming up leftovers, even French fries. That's a good idea, Lisa. I'm gonna try that. Um, so I panko breading on the shrimp, and then it's, it has a dipping sauce that is. Um, made with sriracha so it's got a little spice to it but not anything crazy and then we're going to do lime cilantro rice with it and um, I'm going to saute up some bean sprouts in the uh, Japanese mushrooms the anagi uh, mushrooms I think anoki anoki mushrooms is what you call them so I am pretty <laughs> I'm talking about food and now I'm getting hungry <laughs> And I am probably 1.5 hours away myself, Lisa, from, from dinner. Uh, 
I um, finally saw my identical twin sister. We have not seen each other in months because of the quarantine and we, my husband and I are, we're both being pretty strict with it. So now that the governor has started loosening up our restrictions, I thought it was time to see Denise. Oh, it has been so long since I've seen her. It was like I lived in another state again. It was so nice to see her. Use yours for barbecue chicken. Mark loves it better than out in the, well, especially this time of year with it being so hot. You don't want to go outside and grill anything. What row? Where's my other? Ah. Don't you guys hate that when you're, <laughs> you have a piece right in front of you? Oh, Susie's like, can't eat shrimp, allergic. Then honey, you can't have any. Can't have any of the bang bang shrimp. <laughs> hi, Wenda. Oh, hi, Wenda, how are you? Good to see you too. So in the new air fryer, I have made, <laughs> Donna, you are not the only one that loses stuff. I can't tell you how many extra pieces I've had to cut just for these nine blocks because I move around with it and I've lost little pieces here and there. Thank goodness they gave me extra fabric in the kit I bought. Otherwise I might be in trouble. Becky said she's been wanting to get an air fryer. Is it okay for people to recommend one? Absolutely. So I bought the Instapot branded one off of Amazon because I wasn't going to go, you know, to a store and look at them. And it, the, my Becky, the only thing is that it's huge. Like it is uh, pretty much the size of my microwave because I don't have a built-in microwave in my kitchen. So uh, it's, it's, it's very big. My in-laws have the Emerald one and they love it. And it looked at tiny bit smaller than the Instapot one. Okay, look, it's taking shape. All right. You guys have a certain brand of air fryer that you like? Becky, has that other screw shown up yet? I put it in a big thick envelope this time, so we shouldn't have too much trouble with it um, getting lost in one of the sorters. So let me know when you when that arrives so I can stop worrying about it.
Oh, Kathleen Rogers said she just started using her Instapot. I love that too. I've got a Thai, a, like um, a Thai chicken Thai soup coming up that I'm gonna make with it. Can't wait. Um, so Janelle wants to know, do you use a quarter inch guide foot with the machine? No, this one, this is the foot without the guide. So it's the foot that it's quarter inch from either side of the foot. So if you're doing a lot of like half square triangles, you can jockey that line without having to flip everything. Um, so that's why I did that um, because I'm doing a lot of half square triangles right now. And Donna says oven elite and it has a rotisserie in it. Oh, your air fryer. Nice. Okay. Yeah, mine has that too. It, I'm, it's so smart. I'm telling you, I think it's a little smarter than I am. Becky says she's actually at our daughter's tonight and didn't check the mail before we left. I'll check in them. Okay, great. Thanks. Daughter is enjoying watching. Hi, what's your daughter's name? Does that mean you're with the grandbabies? Okay. One more. I've got two more to go. Oh, I should probably turn my iron off because I'm not going to press tonight. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I know. It had my sewing, my other sewing machine on it. So I had to buy the fabric. What are you supposed to do when they put f your sewing machine on fabric? You guys should see how much of that Singer Featherweight fabric I have. Melanie, no kids yet, grand dogs, a chihuahua, a beagle, and a German shepherd. That is a full crew. Bridget says she's a cast iron kind of girl. Old school. I like that too. I, my, my cast iron, my lodge 12 inch cast iron skillet. I use it so much it doesn't come off the stove. Like it just lives on the stove. in my sewing room no rose this is my sewing room I should give you guys a tour someday to, not today <laughs> who someone wants to know who paints our sewing machines my husband and I paint our sewing machines although we're not painting right now because he is working full-time at a big software company and doesn't have time to do it we are discussing the possibility of doing a few machines this summer because we owe a bright purple to some friends in Ellensburg and I have a couple other machines that are ready for paint, and so we might do some extra ones. So, Rose, this is my um, desk. Behind the camera and the lights is my other sewing station where my Bernina is set up, and she's always ready to go. And then over here is my long arm. And it's a 12 foot millennium, APQS millennium. And then this is my cutting station. And then this is my ironing station. And I take up half of a 600 square foot room, um, which is our family room downstairs. We live in one of those 1960s split level entry houses where you kind of go up and down. 
And so this is the downstairs. So my, my husband is literally right over here playing uh, a video game with some friends. <laughs> uh, Lisa, I am not, Lisa Meadows, no. Your husband is gonna kill me if you buy another machine. So no, it's not happening, my friend. You, you did say that the painted machine, Lisa, was the last one that you might potentially want to add to your collection, if I remember correctly. What, what color would you have one painted if one was to be painted? My favorite is the green color. Uh-oh. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> Woman. Oh, phew. I thought I jammed it up. Have you guys ever do that? Have I ever done that? I will have to think about what color. Okay. I had the nicest lady named Christine call me this week. She was um, from Texas and she um, saw my little mini mouse, my little red and white polka dot one on our website. Exactly, Debbie. Debbie says purple, but not too dark. We painted one last year for a gal whose husband had the um, a, a Dodge Charger show car. And so it was painted that plum crazy purple um, and she wanted a sewing machine to match his show car so we painted it was like the most regal looking purple I've ever seen and the the metal flake in it was it was intoxicating I mean that's the only word for it, it was intoxicating um, and I'm not even a purple person and I thought that machine was absolutely stunning You need to sell your TR2 first. I get it. Uh oh. <laughs> Did I drop another piece? What am I doing, ladies? Okay, I'm missing. It was, oh, no. <laughs> I lost it. What did I do? Two counting pieces. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Did I pick it up with this? I lost a piece. What do you mean? I can't find, I had you just, no. <laughs> Everybody's listening to me look for my piece. Okay, let's see. Nope, that's not it, that's it.
Good gravy, friends. Where did it go? It'll turn up here in a minute, I'm sure. Crunch, crunch, crunch. What was that? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, I just spun it backwards. Never supposed to do that. from Monterey, California. How you doing? I'm in Seattle and it's raining here. Is it raining there in California? Because California sounds pretty amazing. Again, maybe you're sitting on it. Thanks, Rose. <laughs> Am I sitting on it? Nope. <laughs> Thanks, Wenda. She likes my color choices. It's all Tula. Tula has a very good eye. Do you guys see that she's coming out with another basics line? I am sure I had them all, Debbie. I just counted them before I sat down. It's here somewhere. It'll turn up. I'm not worried about it. And I've got a ton of extra fabric back there if I need it. So I bought the big fat quarter pack and you don't really need all of it. So I'm covered. Oh, is it stopped raining? Maybe the sun is going to come out. Oh, of course. California is sunny and 71. Of course. One of my oldest and dearest friends lives in Lake Elsinore. Am I saying that right? Elsinore. Um, just out in Corona, I think. Uh, Corona, California. She is a uh, she is a very fun friend. We've been we've been connected since we were seven years old. She's my oldest friend, outside of my twin. <laughs> Kathleen, I'm not sitting on it. I just looked. <laughs> It'll, it'll show up. Until then, I won't have a corner. <laughs> I have one complete side. I can, I can do that. Okay. Minnesota is sunny and 72. That sounds pretty perfect right about now, too. Oh, Lisa says Arizona is 108. That doesn't sound good. Becky, you switched for, to, over to Instagram? Okay. 
I wonder where my friend Helen is tonight. She must not be on. So Monday is my Ask the Doctor series. And so if you guys have any featherweight questions you want to drop on here while we're um, in our last couple minutes, I can talk about them on Monday when I come back on. I hope I didn't sew two in. Do you think I sewed two in? Nope, one, two, three. Nope, it's not sewn in. I'm literally going to tear this whole thing apart as soon as I <laughs> turn the camera off. <laughs> you would love rain, Susie. Rain at that temperature just means a monsoon. I guess the temperature drops though. Our first year in Arizona, we didn't we didn't know. We don't know any, we didn't know any better because we were from Seattle. And they I remember our, we got there in June. I'm still on Facebook just showing my daughter all of me. <laughs> okay, silly lady. <laughs> So we didn't know about the monsoons. And I remember we moved into this house in, um, it was in Apache Junction. It's my in-laws beautiful home there. And the, it backs up to a wash. No, so if you're not from Arizona, a wash is what we call in Seattle, a green belt. So it's, it's a place where there's no homes. It's an open area in Seattle. It would probably be filled with trees, but in, in Arizona, it looks like a it looks like a um, like a gully, but it's like a 30 foot gully. And so I remember asking someone what that was when we first got to Arizona. <laughs> Susie says, I do love a good monsoon. Uh, and they said, oh, that's the wash. It's, it's because when we have monsoons, the water doesn't saturate into the ground. It has to have somewhere to go because it causes flash flooding. And so, I remember thinking to myself, looking at this 30 foot open gully, that there was no way that there would ever be that much water that would like fill that open space. Oh yes, and Bridget reminds me of the dust storms. Girls, I don't miss any of those things. But, so I remember our first summer, we were there and we got there in June and we did have a couple of good doozies come through because monsoon season in Arizona is like June, July, August ish. Um, and it can, it can fluctuate, you know, in either direction, but, um, give a, give a month or two in either direction. But I remember thinking, cause you actually had to, the road dipped through the wash in order to get to the neighborhood we lived in. And I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> hi, Nancy. She said, uh, hi, Darlene, our home backs up to a wash with a walking path. We love it. Yes. The, there's tons of bunnies out there, and that's where the javelinas run um, and the coyotes. Anyway, so the first big m monsoon we had while we lived in Apache Junction, I couldn't believe it. But the, that gully, like, actually filled. And what was even weirder was it was already had water in it before the rain even hit because it had hit up the hill and then the water had started to flow down before the monsoon even hit our house. Isn't that crazy? In Washington, we get a lot of rain, but the ground soaks it up. So it's not like it, there's nowhere for the water to go. But in Arizona, it doesn't soak in. So it just puddles and flows. And if, you know, you do not mess with flash flood warnings in Arizona. You do not mess with flash flood warnings. They are to be taken very seriously. The summer, that, that first summer that we moved there, there was a family camping up in the mountains uh, in Payson around, they called it the rim. It was like the top of the mountains. Um, oh, Harlan, Kentucky is a wonderful 77. Thanks, Wenda. Anyway, the, uh, did a rattlesnake come out of the wash? No, a rattle. I did see a rattlesnake while we lived there, but it was not in the wash. Thank goodness. Um, <clears throat> anyway, there was a big family camping in, uh, in or by a wash, and there was a monsoon that hit up the mountain, and they got washed away. They got washed away. Like, 
gone. The whole family wiped out. So you do not mess with flash flood warnings in Arizona. And this was my favorite. Um, when if you are not, if you are stupid enough to go into a wash and get stranded in a wash during a monsoon and you have to be rescued, they call it the idiot law. You pay for your rescue, whether that's a helicopter or whatever, um, because they expect you to respect the, the warning signs and mother nature. Isn't that crazy? That was just one of the wonderful things we learned while living in Arizona. <laughs> well, it's 456. And I am going to sh sh shamelessly ask for likes. On Facebook, we are three likes away from 3,000 likes. So if you have not already done this, this is shameless. I realize I apologize. Go to Facebook and like our page. I'd love, it would make my whole weekend to get over 3,000 this weekend. So we just have three more to go. Three of you on here should be able to like go like our page. So it's under Featherweight Doctor. Um, on Monday, I'll be back with my Ask the Doctor series. I'll let everybody know if I found my piece of missing half square triangles. It's here somewhere. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'm, I will be interviewing someone. And then Friday will be my sip and sew again. So I just want to thank everybody so much for joining me um, online tonight. Uh, this is one of my favorite things that I do these days. Oh, the sun is coming out. Yay. Uh, I'm going to go get my Bang Bang shrimp started. Thank you, Donna. You have a wonderful weekend, too. I'll see everybody back here at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Monday. Mwah. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.